Hey folks, welcome back to another fun-filled adventure here on Plumbing with Tim. In today's video, we're heading to the rural part of the county to go work on a well system. Now, you've seen these kind of videos from me before, but because I have a lot of new traffic coming in, I figure I'd share some of this wealth of information with you. So let's head out. All right, so we've arrived at our customer's house. Over here by this little shed, we have a well system. And we were out here last night late trying to get the pump running and stuff and we just couldn't get it going even changed out the capacitor and stuff which you can see blew off in the back of the pump and this thing froze up this is a three-quarter horsepower a hydrojet uh, well pump and we're going to remove this and put a new one in for us today um, and that's real close quarters so we're going to have to cut that out but we don't want to mess with that check valve all right Let's get some stuff out of the van and we'll get started. All right. There is the breaker panel right there. And we have this in the off position. And we've already tested and make sure the electric's off. Uh, let's get this old pump out of here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take and disconnect this pressure switch. Uh, it's brand new, I put it in yesterday, uh, but the pump is shot. So. We've already tested that. There's no power going to it. Let's get this pressure switch off here, and then we're gonna cut loose uh, the plumbing in here. All right, so we have our power disconnected. There's our switch. The only thing that's left hanging on the switch is our pressure hose. Now, if I take that off, water's gonna come out. And unfortunately, um, there's no water in the house, and the gate valve, the check valve, is so close in here. Once I cut this pump loose, we're going to lose all that water. I'll show you what we did to try to combat that, so when we get the new pump in, we'll be able to prime it. Now, if you know you're going out to a rural area and there's no water, but you're going to need some to prime the pump, bring a bucket with some water, some pot of water from wherever your shop is or somewhere on the way, because if not, you're going to have a hard time getting that new pump primed. All right, we're going to pull this little pressure line off of here. Water's going to come out. Oop. There you go. Before you start working on a well system, A, make sure the power's off, and B, identify all the plumbing lines and where they're coming from and where they're going to before you cut anything loose. And if you have any questions or you're worried about not putting it back together right, take a picture of how the setup is before you cut anything loose. The line coming in from the well. That's our line coming back out, going down, through, picking up the pressure tank, as well as our softeners and stuff like that. And the line coming back through is going to the house. So we're not gonna mess with this. We'll try to cut this thing loose here and cut this thing loose right plumb with that because we're gonna have to back the fitting out of that check valve. We do not wanna leave that check valve off. All right, that's what keeps the water in the system from the well. So we're going to try to back that thing off as soon as we cut that loose. So we still have some water in the system here, but we cut that off flush. I gotta back this thing out of here, clean in the inside of those threads real good and put another fitting in there. This is inch and a quarter. Wire brush, clean them threads up real good before we thread another one piece of PVC in there. All right, so here's a look at the new pump that we're going to be putting in, the Pent Air Stay Right uh, Hydrojet well pump. Now, typically speaking on these type of residential pumps, the inlet, which is going to be here, is going to be inch and a quarter, and this is going to be one inch. So we're going to take this cap off. We're going to take this whole thing out of the box, and 
gonna explain to you how we're gonna put this. I was inaccurate in telling you that this was inch and a quarter check valve coming from the well. It's in fact, inch and a half. But remember, we've gotta bush that down inch and a quarter to go into the pump. Well, I've got this little fitting here. Where is it? This is inch and a half thread and the socket end is inch and a quarter. So that indeed, after we put Teflon tape and pipe dope on it, is what will thread into that check valve. On the other hand, the line that's going into the house and in this filtration system is three quarter. Remember I told you that the line coming out of the top of the pump is one inch. So I have the same concept of a one inch thread into a three quarter inch socket, which will be the out going into the home filtration system, which we will put into the uh, new pump and an inch and a quarter all around threaded going into the pump. Test on tape. I want to make sure you take your time. You don't want to forget in one of these steps or not tightening something down enough and then getting it all put together and have a leak and have to pull it all back apart. I always end up putting Teflon tape and then pipe dope on these types of installation when you're going PVC into metal. We get all our threaded fittings um, Teflon as well as pipe dope, get them ready to go and then we'll do all those connections before we start doing any kind of gluing. All right, this is our inch and a half thread by inch and a quarter socket, which we're gonna be installing on the check valve. The line that's coming from the pump of uh, the well head itself. We've got Teflon tape on there and now we're putting some Rector Seal 5 pipe dope on here. We're gonna go ahead and throw it, thread that into the top of that incoming check valve. All right. Tighten as much as you can with your hand and then snug it down with a wrench. All right, now onto the pump. We've got our one inch thread by three quarter socket. This is going to be going in here. And this will be the water that's coming out of the well and into the well system for the house. Take your time, do not cross thread nothing. Snug it nicely. And then last, we're gonna put our inch and a quarter threaded uh, fitting in there. And that's what we're looking at right there. This is ready to go to start gluing it up, as well as our little check valve over there. And then the water line that's going into the system. Somewhere right around in there. This is kind of what we're working with right here. We're gonna make it over there. And we're gonna do a couple things here. We're gonna put a T on here for our pressure switch. All right, so that's an area where if we need, to, we need to prime this pump, put water in it, we can take it off and pour water down in there. Plus, at this point, I'm gonna put a shot off valve as well. I apologize about all the background noise we are working at a place that's next to a major highway with a lot of traffic, so just bear with me. PVC glue. Three quarter inch ball valve. Hold it on there so it doesn't push itself off. top here that's going into the well system we're going to put a 90 and between this point and where we hook up here we're going to put a three quarter by three quarter by half pvc t this is a half inch by quarter thread adapter which we're going to glue at the top of that t Nice and easy. All right, 
here's our pressure gauge. We do have some Teflon tape on there. That's gonna end up going right up in here and screwing in, but we're gonna leave that off. We got 30 minutes to let the glue dry and set up, and then we're gonna take that water that I brought in the bucket like I showed you. We're gonna be pouring water into this pump system, all that water we lost when we took the old one out in order to prime this thing up. All right, in the meanwhile, we're waiting for the glue to dry. We're going to take the cover off of our pressure switch. We're going to hook up our power. All right, here's the inside of our pressure switch. You can see the two lines that are in the middle are the lines that come from the pump. So we have to take our black and our white, doesn't matter which one they are on which side, and put them on the outer terminals and hook up our ground. Nice and easy, take your time. You don't want to skin the electrical lines. That little nut. Slide it down through there like that. Bring it back up on those threads. And tighten them down. See that? Nice and easy. Now time, last thing. Tie the ground, ground in. And let's finish this off by putting our ground in place. And a little bit tricky, but just take your time. And she's wired up. We still got about 20 minutes left uh, for that glue to set up. Go ahead and put our cover back on here for now. And we'll be back in about 20 minutes uh, to put water into the system to get it primed. Now here's a little bit of a heads up. If you are a plumber out doing this type of job, do your best to leave the old pump with the customer, even if it's in a shed or garage, and here's the reason why. If you take that thing and you throw it away, what happens if the customer wanted to keep this and have it rebuilt? Now you're gonna end up having to pull money out of your own pocket to give it back to that customer, because this is a customer's property. You know, just take these out and throw them in the dumpster or take them back to your shop and leave them lay there and they come up missing. Next thing you know, you're shuffling out four or five hundred bucks on a new pump when you just had to take the time to leave it with the customer in the first place. All right, the water is filled all the way to the top. You see that? Now, when you put the pressure gauge on, only use Teflon tape. Remember I told you about pipe dope on metal threads to PVC threads. It'll expand, it'll crack the housing on here. So take your time, don't cross thread this thing. We're gonna tighten this only hand tight. Do not over wrench or none of that stuff. One more full time around, only by hand and end up so it's facing in an optimal position for the customer to be able to monitor the pressure in their system, just like that. Now, before we turn this pump on, we need to find out what this is rated for. The electric that's coming from this, uh, the circuit board uh, panel is 120, and we've taken the back of the pump off, and it reads, there's a switch right here and it's reading at 240, so we need to take and switch that switch from 240 over to 120. Where it says 230 there? Yeah, we need to take our wrench, and we need to turn that to the 115, 120 volt. All right, time to fire this baby up. Now, it's reading it has a little bit of water pressure in there just because we have water that's in the system. It's not under pressure yet. Here we go. He's getting ready to flip the switch on. Let's see where we're at. There she is. We are building pressure nicely. That is a beautiful thing. Running smooth like she should. Air priming. Oh, yeah. Should kick off about 50 pounds. Look at that. I don't see any leaks happening. Voila, success. Customer's gonna have water in their home. Another job well done.
Well, it ain't much, but it's something, and something's better than nothing. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks so much for hanging out and watching the videos and stuff. Uh, business as usual here. We didn't really have many problems. Biggest thing is to take in uh, context and make sure of is if you're going to replace these pumps, make sure you have the proper voltage. Now, in this particular pump, it ran off of 120, but the pump out of the box was set for 240. So that's why we opened up the back of that pump and we hit that switch over so it would match. Now, if you have it any other way about it and you're not running the right voltage, you will burn that pump out, guaranteed. And putting that little house over top of the pump and stuff, it ain't much, like I said, that pump is not gonna get hot enough to burn that thing up. It's made out of fiberglass and stuff. And I did tell the customer that it'd be probably the best interest if they got some sort of a, a shed or some sort of thing to cover that whole well system up just to protect it, especially here in Florida where it rains quite a bit. Got any comments or questions, leave them down below and don't forget to keep plumbing.